DEA says it will keep fighting the opioid crisis and, quote, use all the tools at our disposal to combat this epidemic. The Healthcare Distribution Alliance, representing the drug distribution industry, said the report presented, quote, a misleading picture. It says distributors are, quote, strongly committed to finding systemic solutions to the challenges that contributed to the opioid epidemic. The Washington Post health and medicine reporter Lenny Bernstein co-authored his paper's report on the joint investigation with 60 Minutes. He joins us from Washington. Good morning, Lenny. An incredible piece in the Post and on 60 Minutes last night to read the whole thing. You talked to former DEA agents, including Jim Geldof, who was a 40-year DEA veteran, who said this was a business plan. Are these drug distributors complicit in this epidemic? Well, they certainly uh, have been caught uh, numerous times over and over and over again not reporting uh, suspicious orders of these opioid pain pills from doctors and pharmacies. That is the law. They must report those things. They must report them to the DEA and say, hmm, this guy ordered 20,000 pills last month. Now he wants 100,000 pills. We're a little worried about that. Over and over and over again, they did not do that, and those pills found their way into the hands of users and dealers. So then the question becomes, why did they not report it, right? Right. Uh, is it because they want to make money? Is it because it's too difficult for them to keep track of all these pills? Is it because they just were not geared up to do this kind of due diligence? It doesn't really matter. The law is the law. Mm -hmm. I can't just not report my taxes because I have some reason that, that prohibits mm -hmm. me from doing my taxes. Mm -hmm. You've got to do it. They've got to find a way to do it. And if those pills spill out onto the street by the hundreds of millions, it's their responsibility. Uh, this bill was written by a former DEA official, passed by unanimous consent of Congress. What was the argument that made that happen? The argument that made that happen, the argument that sold this bill on Capitol Hill, was that legitimate uh, pill users, legit legitimate painkiller users, were not getting their drugs in an efficient manner. And uh, Congressman Marino and others brought that to Congress and said, well, I've got all these folks out there who do need these pills, and they're not able to get them when they need them because the DEA is out of control, because the DEA is cracking down so hard on these distributors that folks are not getting their drugs. Well, there's nothing in the law that actually changes that at all. And the evidence for that was actually sort of anecdotal. Um, whereas the evidence for the fact that these pills were ending up at the hands of dealers and users was quite uh, substantial. Lenny, the DEA told us that only a minute fraction of the more than 1.7 million individuals with DEA registrations are involved in the inappropriate distribution of these drugs. How impactful is that fraction? Well, that's true, but uh, the impact that one single uh, pharmacy can have is enormous. Uh, as we reported, and you at 60 Minutes reported, you had a single pharmacy in West Virginia that put millions of pills on, on the street in a town of several hundred people. There were two pharmacies in Sanford, Florida, in the, uh, in the time frame before 2012, that put millions of pills on the street by themselves. And, and the underground network gets to know where these pharmacies are, and people come from far and wide, from Appalachia all the way down to Florida. Mm -hmm. Uh, from Ohio, and they get those pills. If you have a rogue doctor or a rogue pharmacist, the impact is enormous. What's been the response to the piece on 60 Minutes on Sunday night and, and to the Washington Post uh, above the full lead story on Sunday? Well, uh, we've heard from the DEA. They issued the statement that you guys referenced uh, at the beginning of this segment. Um, we've heard from the drug distributors. They have made several arguments that are true but irrelevant to our reporting. And, uh, you know, it's Monday morning here. We'll see what happens on Capitol Hill. But Tom Marino is nominated to be the next drug czar? He is. Wow. At least 46 we, we, we don't. We don't, know, we don't know what will happen there. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, his, his hearing isn't even set. Lenny Bernstein with The Washington Post. Great reporting. Thanks, Lenny.